Okay, this video is about uh, neck position or head position when you ride horses. Low head or low neck versus or against high head or high neck. I've talked about that in so many videos about the position of the body of the rider and the horse's position when you ride him. The position of the neck. Boost rein against or versus short contact or bending the neck or whatever. And I said a lot of things that are true facts that you cannot deny. That horses in the wilderness, without anyone interfering in their nature, so many times choose to move with a loose neck, a low head, and so many times the same horse will move with a high head or a high neck on bend his body or bend his neck or bend his head. Although it's the same horse. So sometimes he chooses this position and some other times he chooses this position. The ways of riding who ride in a good way and force him to move with a low neck, with a loose rein, with a, uh, let's say, uh, a low head, although it's a good way of riding, don't have the right to say it's a natural way of riding because you forced him to do something that he does in his nature and you prevented him from doing something else that he does in his nature. The same goes for other good ways of riding who force him to move with a high head and bend his neck and prevent him from moving with a low head or moving with a loose rein or a loose neck. So you take one side of his nature, which is natural, and you prevent the other side. So it's not natural, it's correct, it's right, but it's not the best, it's not natural, that's a fact. Now, is it more healthy? Is it better? Is it, let's say, uh, a better choice for the horse? to move with a uh, low head or a loose uh, neck or is it not? Is it better to move with a high head or is it not? Now, to me it's very simple. You go back to why do they want the loose neck? Why do they want the high head? And it will answer all your questions. One, the ones who force him to move his head up, in my opinion, are not the best. Good, okay, but they are not the best. They are not riding in the natural way of riding. The ones who force him to move with a loose neck are good, are right, but they are not the best. They are not riding him in the natural way of riding. To me, the best way of riding, the natural way of riding, is to make him have the right, to give him the right to move with a loose neck when he wants, and the same horse will move with a high head when he wants. And the same ride, the same horse with the same rider will move with a loose neck. After two or three kilos, he will move his head up. After two or three kilos, he will move it down again, then he will bend his neck, then he will move the loose neck. So it depends on the horse, he will choose to do it whenever he wants. That's natural, that's the best. Two, not every horse who moves with a loose neck is more comfortable. Not every horse who's more calm or more cold is more comfortable. And not every horse who moves with a high head or a, an active horse or a hot horse is always uncomfortable or less comfortable. Prove it, very simple. Cold-blooded horses are always calm, always cool, because they are heavy. Still, a lot of them are trained in a bad way and you can't control them. They rear up, they buck, they bolt, but still they are calm because it's their nature. A criminal will act in a very cool and cold way. Cold-blooded criminal. So he moves and acts in a cold way, but still he's a criminal, he's a bad person. So not everyone hot or active is not comfortable and everyone calm is comfortable. It depends on how you do it. People say, uh, say that any horse with a loose neck any calm horse is trained in a good way. That's bullshit. Prove it very simple. Control him. If you say he's calm, if you say he trusts you, if you say he's calm because he trusted you, control him in the bed. Why did he buck you off his back? Where is trust? The opposite goes for the ones who control a hot horse. He's hot, he's active, but still, he, when he was afraid, did not buck me, did not run away from me. He trusted me. So it depends on what you want. In the Western way of riding, you ride the horse for the cow. The main reason, the source for your way of riding is cattle. Cattling decide what you will do with the horse. It's not for the horse, it's for the cow. It's for the cattle. 
So Catalink is the source of your way of buying. So the more your horse becomes, let's say the more calm your horse becomes, the calmer your horse, the calmer the cow becomes. So when you ride that cow horse or when your horse becomes calm, uh, the cattle will become more calm. The cows will become more calm. The bulls will become more calm. So you make him calm because you want the cows to become calm. And cool. So it's for the cow, not for the horse. So it's a good thing. But it's not the best thing. You can't say it's good in every situation. In the Spanish riding school, they want the horse to do some moves and they are showing their moves to the audience, to the people or the fans who are watching. So they want him to be active. They want him to move with a high head. So it's correct in their situation, but it's not always correct. Arabians, especially in the past, love the horse to move with a high head. Because the main purpose, the source of their way of riding, was the battle, was war. A famous uh, poet once said in his uh, one of his poems, he said, وَلَقَدْ حَمَيْتُ الْحَيَّةَ تَحْمِلُ سَكَّةِ فُرْطُ وِشَاحِ إِذْ غَدَّوْتُ رِجَامُهَا That means I protected my uh, people or my tribe with my mare. And this mare who's carrying my body on her back, half of my body was covered with her high head. So I'm riding a mare, half of my body is covered because of what? Her high head. So it's a good thing. A thing that they wanted in the past. You can't imagine a horse in the war, in the battlefield, moving with a low head, low neck, loose neck. Impossible. It's war. It's battle. So they move their head up. So to me, it's very simple. I'm not saying it's a good thing. I'm not saying it's a bad thing. High head, bending your neck could be wrong, could be right. So it depends on how you do it. Prove it in his nature. He does both. The same goes for low head and loose rein. It can happen in a good way, it can happen in a good way. Do it in a good way, it's good. Do it in a bad way, it's bad. Prove it in his nature, he does it by himself. Now, if you want to say bad things about moving the head high, no matter how it's done, a lot of people can say bad things about moving the head low or the loose, loose neck, no matter how you do it. If you call that horse crazy, or uh, let's say sensitive, or he's uh, afraid, or he's not comfortable, or he's stressed, okay, they will say that your horse is acting like a slave. You broke his personality. You broke his character. He's not a horse anymore. He's a mule. He's a donkey. He's a slave. It's not true. But what you said about moving the head high was not true either. What I say is a fact. You don't have the right to give me your opinion about it. It's a fact. Your horse in the paddock, a horse in the wilderness, will do what my horse does. In the same ride, loose neck, low head, high head, bends his neck, becomes hot, becomes calm, new strength, becomes light, becomes heavy. I give him the right to do whatever he wants as long as I am with him. I am controlling him. But when your way of riding is based on just some moves and he has to do it and if he does not do it, he's a bad horse. It's a good thing in what you do. In other things, you suck. It's that simple. The same goes for the opposite side. So, low head and loose neck, high head and bending the neck or short contact is not always correct, but it's not always bad. It's not always against the uh, good. It can be good and it can be bad. If you do it in a good way, it's good. If you do it in a bad way, it's bad. So it depends on how you do it more than just doing it. And uh, to me, in my opinion, most of the good riders, it doesn't matter what their way of riding is, make the horse do it in a good way. They care about how they do it more than just doing it. But the problem is, after doing it, they say it's more natural. They say it's best. It's the be best for the horse. It's better than other way of riding. You say, what's your proof? They don't have a fact. Their proof is not a fact. It's an opinion. Sometimes it's a strong, good opinion. But usually it's not a fact. My proof is a fact. Your own horse in the paddock does what my horse does when I'm riding him. The horse in the wilderness does what I, my horse does when I'm riding him. 
But what your host does after you train him in your way of riding doesn't happen all the time with my horse inside the paddock and doesn't happen all the time with the with the wild horse in the wilderness. So it's more natural because it's closer to the wild horses. It's more natural because it's closer to the horse when he's alone in the paddock. Fact as a proof, not an opinion as a proof. That's my opinion about high and low head, loose neck and bending the neck.